Despite the recent coldness, people are turning their attention to warmer temperatures and the activities that go with them. Area sports enthusiasts got a chance to see the latest in sports and recreation gear at the Spring Sports Show and Recreation Show. The SIU Arena hosted the event over the weekend, highlighting the show were campers, trailers, scuba, and canoe gear. Also featured were the newest in hunting and fishing equipment and several informative seminars. The show was both entertaining and informative to sports buffs and experts alike. Jim D'Agostino joins us now with sports. And Jim, it was a bad night for the dogs. Well, Cindy, you know, SIU beat Evansville by two points at the start of the season for both teams, but tonight it was payback time for the Aces. A near capacity crowd rocked Roberts Stadium at Evansville with a good number of Saluki fans on hand as well. And Randy House gave SIU its first points of the night. The Saluki forward hit the three pointer. It was Tony Harvey with the assist, and the dogs took an early lead by one. There's the assist down low from Tony Harvey out to House, who kicks it in for the three-pointer. Evansville came back, used the fast break as Scott Hefner finds Reed Kraft in on the other end of a long pass. Kraft puts it through, making it a four-point lead for the Aces. So Luke has decided to use that play to tie it up as Sterling Mahan finished off a 3-1 break. He puts it in, and it falls, but the Aces... Went on to beat the Salukis, 89-87 at home. It was a free throw by former Marion star Scott Schreffler that pretty much iced it for the Aces. Law snapped the three-game SIU winning streak. Dogs are now 16-7 overall. That's still more wins than any other team in the Missouri Valley Conference. Evansville is now an impressive 16-3. Was some good news for the Saluki basketball team for the third time this year. A member of that team is, was named the Missouri Valley Conference Player of the Week. Kai Nuremberger earns that honor this time. Saluki guard totaled 44 points and two road wins for SIU last week. Also had 10 rebounds and 7 assists. Nuremberger had 24 points at Illinois State, 20 against Indiana State. He joins Freddie McSwain as the Salukis that have been the player of the week so far this season. McSwain has won that honor twice so far this year. Creighton has the best record in the league as of tonight in the Missouri Valley. Tonight the Blue Jays down Cleveland State 92-82. Their non-conference record is now 14-7. Bradley won its third conference game of the year. The Braves set back Tulsa at home 78-69. Tulsa is 5-3 and three in the league. Bradley is 3-6. and six. And Illinois State is now 3-6 and six in the league. The Redbirds beat Wichita State at home 57-52. Shockers are now 7-3 and three in the Valley. That is good for second in the league standings. And for the third time in as many weeks, there's a new number one team in college basketball. Arizona is tops in this week's Associated Press poll. Wildcat Wildcats move up from number four to take the lead. They lead the Pac-10 Conference. Arizona is 17 and two. Georgetown is number two. That's up four spots. Missouri at 20 and three is ranked third. Tigers have more wins than any other team in the top 20. Louisville is number four. Oklahoma five. Sooners one week stay at the top was ended with a loss to Oklahoma State. Number six is North Carolina at 18 and four. Then it's Illinois thanks to back-to-back -back losses. Illinois is down to number seven. Iowa cracked the top ten with the win over the Illini. Hawkeyes are eighth. Syracuse is number nine, and Seton Hall is ranked tenth. Tonight, Louisville didn't take care of its number four ranking. Cardinals will beat at home by number 12, Florida State, 81-78. Number five, Oklahoma, outdid Iowa State, 126-97. to Ninth-ranked Syracuse beat Seton Hall, 85-79. Orange men are now 20-4. and four. That's their 17th consecutive 20-win season. In the Big Ten, number 16, Ohio State is leading Purdue 31 to 27 in the second. And St. Louis University, Cindy, down Western Illinois, 92 to 57. That's the Billikens' 16th straight win on their home court, and that sets a school record. And Thanks, that is Jim. sports. Thanks. Thank you, Jim. When we come back, you better warm up that electric blanket because it's going to be another frigid night. And a local celebration of the Year of the Snake. We'll be back after this. The deep freeze that hit southern Illinois last Thursday is likely to continue at least until the weekend. The forecast is coming up in just a few minutes, but let's first take a look at the current conditions. It's 16 degrees in Carbondale, the skies are cloudy, and the humidity stands at 67%. Winds are out of the north at 5 miles per hour. The, bar the barometric pressure is at 30.42 inches and rising, and we have had no precipitation in the last 24 hours. Checking area temperatures, it's 11 degrees in St. Louis. Evansville checks in at 15. 15 likewise in Cape Girardeau. 
15 in Paducah as well, and once again in Carbondale, 16 degrees. Now the forecast. Tonight, mostly cloudy with a 40% chance for snow. The lows will be in the upper teens. Tomorrow, mostly cloudy with the high in the mid-20s. Thursday night, cloudy once again with a 40% chance for snow. The low in the upper teens again. And the extended outlook for Wednesday, mostly cloudy with the high between 25 and 30 degrees. Most of us celebrated New Year's Day over a month ago. But for one group, the new year has just begun. It's the year of the snake. The Chinese New Year was brought in at Lincoln Junior High School this weekend. This year's program was coordinated by the Malaysian Chinese Association in Carbondale. Chairman Tio B. Yap says the Chinese New Year is the most important event of the year for Chinese people all over the world. Included in this year's entertainment was a popular lion dance, which is said to ward off evil spirits at the beginning of each Chinese New Year. The ringing in of the New Year of the Snake was a celebration that will not soon be forgotten. And uh, Kyle, I thought it was great that you did the lion dance to ward off evil spirits before the newscast tonight. <laughs> That's right, and I think we kept them away tonight. I think so. That's all the news for the night report. For Jim D'Agostino, I'm Cindy Piper. And I'm Kyle Wiggs. Stay tuned for the McNeil Lair News Hour. It's coming up next. Thanks for watching. <laughs>